Hi, my name is Leo Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question uh, as to can you trade Forex fundamentals with any uh, strategy, a technical strategy? And um, I've been getting a few questions on this and a few queries, I guess, and um, I thought I'd just address it uh, in a video. So um, before I really get to the answer, I mean the answer is is yes and no. But there are things that you could that you have to be very very aware of um, before trading um, with with certain strategies uh, and applying fundamentals to certain strategies. So uh, first things first is really what is fundamental analysis, and it's really fundamental analysis is uh, how um, to determine uh, value whether something an asset. Uh, or an exchange rate in terms of forex is a potential bargain um, uh, or fair value or expensive, right? That's all fundamental analysis is. Fundamentally, you're you're understanding what drives value. Price and value are two different things. Yes, a lot of people get confused. Uh, you know, um, in in terms of price, price doesn't always reflect value, and value doesn't or isn't always reflected in price. If it was, then nothing would ever be cheap or expensive because it would be the price. The price would reflect the value. But there are, you know, <laughs> there are um, assets that are bargains, and there are assets that are expensive. Right? We know that. Um, you know, just from um, understanding value, right? But in for some reason, online, in you know, in 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 the uh, social media space, for some reason, that you know, under uh, fundamental, you know, analysis doesn't apply to forex. You know, a lot of traders would have you believe, which is absolutely nonsense. It applies to everything else. It applies to stocks. It can apply, apply to bonds. It can apply to cryptocurrency. It can apply to property. It can apply to you know, uh, toothpaste. It can apply to anything. Yeah. But it doesn't apply to um, uh, um, forex, which is you know very strange. But I'm here to tell you that it does. Now, if we understand that fundamental analysis is just understanding value, and value is not always reflected on price, then um, we can kind of at least get to grips with um, how we should kind of trade. Um, and apply certain um, technical strategies or your technical strategies. So um, one of the things that I would always suggest is to be spatially aware, yeah, spatially aware. And what I mean by that is that um, technically a lot of traders will, uh, you know, just look at levels of uh, support and resistance, right? So they will come in and they will see a level, they will go down to like a five minute level um, or five minute time frame and then they will see a level or a couple of levels and go, all right, then, yep, I want to be a buyer, you know, right here. Yeah, because I've just seen that this is uh, support turn resistance, resistance turn support, whatever it is uh, that you want to call it. And I want to be a buyer right there, let's say. But let's, for example, you zoom out, right? And let's say on the daily time frame chart, yeah, it's you're actually buying, yeah, at around this area here. Let's say you're buying at potential highs. Like, so this five minute chart yeah the location of that is somewhere up here on a daily chart so this would be the daily and this would be the five minute now you could want to get long on a on a on a currency right um whatever that currency may be because you maybe you understand um you know fundamentally the the, the you know you have a certain bias right but does that mean that you should really be buying at the highs on a daily time frame chart and this is where traders will end up typically going wrong is because they you know they get the direction right yeah in terms of all right i want to be a buyer of one currency over another because i've watched you know many of leon's videos and this is what he says to to you know how to apply fundamental analysis so i want to be long this currency pair but i'm going to zoom down into the five minute time frame chart and so I'm going to start to buy at every single, you know, um, five minute supply zone or five minute support level. Right. That is not it. Right. And when I say spatially aware, you, you need to understand that on a daily time frame chart, you're buying at an expensive area. This is, you know, objectively expensive in terms of when you look back on what prices have done. Yeah. This could have been a move of, you know, a couple of hundred pips 
pullback of a couple of hundred pips and a move of a couple of hundred pips and you're trying to get involved and buy at highs yeah the the the, the cliche and the mantra as true as it might be a cliche is to buy low and sell high yeah you know many um uh, uh day traders will just you know buy randomly looking at uh, an intraday you know just intraday levels when ultimately fundamental analysis and understanding value you should understand that this is expensive yeah and that you need a pullback right you will need a pullback in order for you to be uh to for this to be uh, a bargain right so as prices start to pull back yeah into you know let's say for example this zone here right i don't really trade you know support and resistance in 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 the way uh that i'm showing you now um but just for example say let's say you know your strategy is trading support and resistance yeah you want to wait for that pullback on a daily time frame then enter into a you know a, maybe a five ten minute hourly chart and then look for intraday trades because you know from being spatially aware and understanding value yeah, that you're not buying an expensive area. In fact, you're buying on a pullback, which may be some sort of fair value, right? Or at least it's cheaper than it was buying at the high. Yeah. So, um, yes, you can trade the fundamentals. You can, you know, have a fundamental bias, which typically doesn't really change too often um, uh, in the way that you know we trade tra um, fundamentals. Uh, um, uh, uh, trading 180 um it's very rare that you'll go from you know day to day week to week saying all right i want to be a buyer of this and then next week i'm going to be a seller of that and then the following week you want to be a buyer of that right and same thing with, with months we don't necessarily go month to month you know buying the euro and selling the euro and buying the euro typically we um you know when, once we have a fundamental bias on a currency pair or not because you know not all currencies uh, are buyers or sells right but there are um, times where when you once you we identify value right and where you know which currency we want to be buying and selling um, those currencies and that, that trade idea can last for months so we can have a bias um, to maybe for example short the euro dollar which we had have had over the past 18 months um, and just literally short the euro and buy the dollar right so it's not something that you know again this is misconstrued i think online and maybe just or maybe not even misconstrued. It might it might just be a case of how other traders understand how to how they trade fundamental analysis. But in the way that we trade fundamental analysis at Trading One Eighty, um, our bias um, can typically last for you know a very long time. Um, uh, and there's no real real reason to change it. It's just a case of just maintaining um, and reading up on um, you know if anything has changed. As long as nothing has changed, then we just keep you know buying on dips now. Um, you know that when it comes to you know selecting intraday levels and being spatially aware yeah that those are the really the two main reasons as to why traders uh, don't uh, trade fundamental analysis or don't understand and also as well another thing would be for example you know i get the question well why don't you just trade it on the way down well that's not really how um you know to trade to trade you know as far as you know buying going higher right let's you know going long and then going against your fundamental and uh, bias on the way down i mean you could do that but then what's the point in using fundamental analysis right you might as well just stick to technical analysis if you want to try to um you know buy at higher uh, you know um uh, pick turning points continual you know whether it's um the to the upside or to the downside but we know um you know from brokers who basically publish their results every i think it's every month or two uh and they say that pretty much something like 70 to 80 percent of traders yeah are um are losing traders right and don't make any money um and that's their statistics yeah so you know on their trading platforms you look at the disclaimer and most traders you know are typically trading what technical analysis you know it because if you go on youtube and you look at the ratio of fundamental analysis videos that get views like mine in comparison to technical analysis videos you know people want the easy technical analysis you know simple uh you know uh, strategy in order to make you know lots of money um those are the videos that get you know hundreds of thousands of views fundamental analysis uh for for, for you know people 
typically is uh, is a, is too much hard work, and also as well, you know, you've got a you know. Um, uh, it's not really, you know, taught in the way that it should be as well, which again is not the trader's fault because, um, you know, they don't know any better. But the point being is that if you want to try and go long and short, yeah, seventy to eighty percent of traders lose money. So it's, you know, I found it easier to apply fundamental analysis, and if prices are coming back against fundamental analysis, to look at any pullbacks as just buying opportunities. It makes, you know, all the sense in the world. To take profit at expensive areas, you know, partial profits, full profits, and then just wait for a pullback down into, you know, a zone where you think there's going to be another bargain, right, around here, or wherever it is, right? If that doesn't work out, then cool, it doesn't work out. Then you just look for another level, right? This would really be where I'd be looking at, which is a, which would be a demand zone. And then you look for an area there, right? As long as the fundamentals haven't changed and resentment is on your side, then that makes all the sense in the world. So. With that being said, um, banks are tactical as well, right? So, um, just going off of you know uh, uh, looking at because uh, one of the things that we do at Trading One Eighty is we confirm our fundamental bias with um, several um, banks, loads of banks. Matter of fact, and I say loads, but maybe about ten, eleven, twelve uh, banks on a regular basis one of them being a uh, city bank and they were you know they produce a report um, um, quite regularly and so what banks will do is they will use language in terms of uh, they will go long and short but they will use the word tactically right so what they will have is maybe an overall position to get short on a currency pair like their main position might be to say all right and we'll continue to short the euro dollar but what they may do is they may go tactically long yeah um at certain areas tactically means in the short term um and it's against their overall bias so that they can obviously maybe take advantage of potential pullbacks potential profit taking etc but their overall you know, main position will be fundamental position will be to the short side, but a lot of times they will they will say they are tactically long on um, you know uh, on a currency to maybe just take advantage of a potential uh, small uh, pullback. Now, um, what was I going to say on this? I can't remember what I was saying. This, yeah, that was it. Also, as well, one of the things is, is, is a bit of a tip. Right, that you can use in terms of understanding, um, you know, where you are spatially, fundam not necessarily fundamentally, but you know, from a value perspective, and it's to do with the um, what traders would know as the moving average. Right, moving average is actually moving fair value. Yeah, and what I mean by that is that an average or a mean um, is, uh, you know, the 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 average between you know a high and a low point right and that would be the mean or the average if or cheap yeah so a high would be depending on which you're buying is the base currency or the quote currency or cheap right so if you're buying for example um you know dollar yen yeah dollar yen then a high is going to be expensive yeah and a, and a pullback and a low is going to be cheap if you think that you want to be a buyer of the dollar if you're buying the euro yeah, over the dollar. Well, sorry, if you're buying the dollar uh, still over the euro and you want to be a buyer of the euro, then actually a high, yeah, is going to be a cheap price, yeah, because you're actually shorting um, to get to buy the uh, euro. I'm sorry, to buy the dollar. And um, a low is actually going to be expensive because you're buying, uh, you know, the, the, the quote currency, which means in order to buy it, yeah, you need to actually do the opposite. Yeah. So, with that being said, going back to um, moving averages, if you take change the language of what a moving average is in terms of value, yeah, what the moving average is saying to you is that, or let's say for example, a twenty-one period moving average is actually telling you that over and on the daily chart, twenty-one bars or twenty-one days. Um, that is the uh, fair value of price. So if I was to press, for example, this one month tab down at the bottom left, yeah, it's gonna give me price action from this high to this low. And what this 
moving fair value and this is by the way the EMA the exponential moving average and the um, uh, SMA the simple moving average or what I'd like to you know term uh, moving fair value right so 20 so this is the daily 21 day moving fair value right both EMA and SMA and why the 21 because there are 21 this is a 21 days trading days in a month so in fact I actually do refer it to in you know the trading 180 term terminology is the monthly moving fair value right so this is telling you what price you know the fair value of price over the past month yeah um, if you take that high and that low currently fair value yeah is between 10046 and 1003 uh, oh, on the euro uh, dollar exchange rate. Yeah, if you taken into account uh, the high and the low and the, uh, what price has done over that month. So anything above fair value should be seen as cheap or getting cheaper because what comes beyond, what goes beyond fair value, right? If this is a bargain and this is expensive, 50% between expensive and a bargain would be considered fair value. And anything below fair value starts to become what? More of a bargain. It's exactly the same thing with moving averages, right? Or what I again term to be moving fair value. So any trades that set up below the monthly moving fair value, personally, I don't get interested in I'm not interested in it's only when I see price go above the monthly moving fair value is when I start to get interested in um, setups and that makes you know perfect sense when you consider you know fundamental analysis yeah and understanding value now banks will again as I said before they will map tactically go long or short right there's various different you know um you know they say tactically sell you know on 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 strength right uh, for the for the for the uh for the pound and there's some other ones as well just this is just city bank but um but the point being is that banks can go long right to make some short-term money but overall their main position will be short and i'm more focused on understanding their main position rather than where they're trying to get uh, long or short tactically yeah in the uh, in the short term and uh, they've got their reasons for obviously you know going long and short these are the most clever you know people some of the most clever people on the planet right but um if you can filter out yeah trying to capture every single move and just look at their main positions um, and where they are then uh, trading becomes a lot easier um, obviously you have to have a bit more patience uh, with that because there are periods of time where you have to wait for these pullbacks right and that might not you know happen for maybe a week or two but um, we're not only just trading one uh, pair you know I'm, I'm not anyway I'm play, trading multiple pairs so there's usually a trade somewhere at least once or twice a week um, uh, as we wait for uh, pullbacks depending on obviously uh, the currency pairs that we're looking to uh, trade and sometimes there isn't any trades right for that week as prices do pull back and depends on what we're looking at fundamentally but the point is is that um, it's really understanding value it's really understanding where you should be trading um, uh, with your strategy if you're using any you know technical analysis strategy I use uh, three technical analysis strategies in combination so I use uh, daily supply and demand uh, something called capture pain relief as well as uh, stop hunts and I apply those strategies with um, with the fundamentals and that just gives me my bias and then I'm just eliminating any trade that goes against that bias as far as I'm not I'm ignoring any setups that go against my bias so even if I see a fantastic trade you know CPR trade but it's a uh, but it's against my bias I'm not going to take it based off of technicals I'm taking my bias based off of you know the fundamentals um, and that's that so if you do uh, and are interested in um, you know learning about the fundamental analysis side of things um, I do have a discord group it is a it is subscription based 
and um, enrollment uh, will end on the 11th of September. Um, I might open up again, um, maybe towards the end of the year. I haven't really decided yet, but um, you can just, uh, if you do want to trade your own strategies, that's fine. You can. You don't have to go through my technical analysis strategy. So you've got the supply and demand trading course here. You've got capture pain relief trading. You've got stop hunt manipulation course and then you've got the fundamental analysis as well so you've got all the fundamental analysis um, uh, data spreadsheet etc access to and then um, you can really you know get into um, you know how we trade fundamental analysis and apply that to you know certain things to your uh, to your technical analysis as well as we have our fundamental analysis um, you know uh, bank resources bank research um, and uh, up-to-date uh, fundamentals on each of the um, uh, countries as well as gold and silver commodities government bonds uh, etc so um, i hope that clarifies um you know trading fundamental analysis with strategies short answer is you can but just be aware of these uh, these factors and don't try not to buy at highs uh, or sell at lows be spatially aware understand where value is um by you know um and one of the ways you can do that is not only looking at daily daily zones um and daily areas daily highs uh, but also by looking at um you know the uh, monthly moving fair value and applying that to your uh, to your charts anyways i hope that helps if you have any questions um you can email me at info at trading 180.com until the next video take care and uh, wish you all the best